Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Carlin Cho and in today's video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know to start streaming poker on Twitch. The goal of this video is to create a single video that will cover all the basics uh, and basically everything you need to know from the equipment to the streaming software. And yeah, basically it's gonna be a longer video, but we guarantee that you'll be able to stream and you know have a basic knowledge of how things work after you watch this video so let's get right into it and let's actually start with the equipment because i think this is where it starts and ends for so many people because they use the lack of equipment uh, to not start streaming which i think is totally wrong especially if you stream poker one of the advantages of streaming poker is that you don't actually need a high-end setup okay you don't need a high-end gaming pc for 2k 3k you know Anything decent will get the job done. The most important part of your PC is your CPU, AKA your processor. Uh, I would say that any decent i3, any de decent i5, i7 or better, of course, are more than enough uh, for streaming poker. Also any AMD Ryzen processors and maybe even some older FX uh, processors from AMD are totally fine for streaming poker. This is something that drives me crazy because I receive a lot of messages and people telling me their PC specs and they're like, hey, oh, I don't think my PC is powerful enough to stream poker. I'm like, bro, you don't stream freaking God knows what, Fortnite. You stream poker, okay? They're just cars moving, the animations are simple. Uh, so yeah, this is one of the best or one of the biggest advantages of streaming poker is that you don't actually need a high-end PC. You just need something decent. If you're not sure if your PC can handle streaming or if you're looking to build a new setup, feel free to send us a message on StreamHelp on our website kalancho.com slash production slash StreamHelp. Uh, the link will be in the description down below. Uh, just ask us uh, whatever question you have. Uh, as I said, if you're looking to buy a new processor or whatever, uh, just send us a message and we will discuss it with you and we will do our best to you know help you pick what's the best for you and what will give you the best performance same goes for the microphone and the webcam you don't need anything fancy now if you have to choose between you know either getting a better webcam or getting a better microphone i would highly suggest to get a better microphone you know if your budget is limited and you have to choose one get a better microphone uh, people can stand when your webcam is, you know, not the sharpest, but they can't stand when your microphone just doesn't sound right, you know, when they have to listen to you for hours, you know, it's good or it would be good if it at least sounded decent. What I recommend and what I also personally use uh, are the Blue Yeti Blackout microphone and the Logitech C922 webcam. Uh, they cost all together, I think, approximately 200 bucks, uh, which is super budget friendly and the quality is just insane, you know, considering that the microphone is just a USB microphone, the webcam is a 1080p webcam, it's just something that will, you know, be timeless and if you buy those two, you don't have to improve in near future, I think. Uh, so yeah, and as I said, the quality is pretty awesome considering the price. And that's basically it when it comes to the equipment. Uh, I would say, you know, it's not necessary, but if you can get at least two monitors, it makes the streaming workflow easier and it also, you know, lets you recognize what is what and it just gives you, uh, you know, just a better chance of organizing things and making everything look uh, nice for you and also nice for your audience. So if you can get two monitors. So once you have your setup ready, it's time to download and set up the software. Now, there are many different streaming softwares, but I would say that OBS and Streamlabs OBS are the most popular. Me personally, I use Streamlabs OBS. Uh, I used OBS, the normal OBS back in the day, uh, but I switched to Streamlabs OBS probably one year ago, uh, I think, uh, because it has many cool built-in functions that OBS doesn't have, you know. And even if you use OBS, you will probably have to use Streamlabs as well. Um, so it just kind of makes sense to have everything in one place, you know, using Streamlabs OBS. So in this tutorial, we will use Streamlabs OBS and yeah, that's what I recommend personally. If you would like to display what time is it on your stream or, 
you know have a countdown or count up or anything else time related you will need a software called SNES. If you would like to display what song is currently playing on your stream you will need a software called SMG. I don't think SMG is free anymore, it was free back in the day but now it costs $9.99 uh, if I'm correct. So you will have to invest some money if you would like to have this option. Uh, I think there's another software, I, I think it's called Snip. Uh, I will also actually look it up and put a link in the description down below. Uh, so yeah guys, now feel free to stop the video, go download all the software that I talked about so far. Everything is linked in the description down below. Stop this video, go download it, then come back so we can start with the setup process. Okay guys, so here we go, a fresh copy of Streamlabs OBS. The first thing we want to do is to log in with our Twitch account. Uh, once we are logged in, we will get this option to import our settings and our scenes from OBS. Uh, we've used OBS, but that's not our case, so we will press the button that says start fresh. Uh, now you get uh, an option to choose from one of the teams that uh, Streamlabs OBS offers, but we don't want to do that, so we will sk uh, skip this option. And now you get uh, an option to optimize the settings for you. So what this option does, it basically analyzes your internet speed and also your uh, PC and it gives you the best settings uh, or it recommends the settings to you and basically setups uh, everything for you. But we don't want to do that, we're going to do it manually. So I will skip this as well and here we go, a fresh empty clean copy of Streamlabs OBS. Uh, what I will actually do, I will uh, add my webcam so you guys can see me while I'm talking. Here we go, the resolution is a bit weird but I'll change it uh, later on. And what we want to do as uh, the first thing is uh, go to the settings and guys I will do my best to explain everything in each of those tabs. To the best of my ability, of course, there are a lot of things that I have no clue about. Uh, but I would say I'm pretty experienced when it comes to, you know, OBS and basically the, the settings and everything. So yeah, I'll do my best to explain everything as detailed as possible and also as, uh, you know, to basically make it understandable to not use, you know, the, the advanced terminology and stuff. So let's uh, start with the general tab. Um, the first three options, as you can see, um, we have the show cache directory, delete cache and restart, and also upload cache to developers. Uh, you won't probably use this option uh, or none of those options uh, that often. Uh, besides this one, maybe, but if you use this option, it will actually delete all your settings uh, and also all your scenes. So you really wanna use this just in very rare cases uh, so I would say that this is not that important for us uh, confirm stream title and game before going live let me actually show you what it does so now when the box is checked uh, if I press the go live button uh, this window right here will pop up and it will ask us to uh, confirm the the game that we're playing which it will be poker in our case it will also you know let us either change or just confirm the title uh, you know add tags or remove tags and stuff like that and then go live uh, and of course if we uncheck this box and if I press this we will just stream right away without any uh, window popping up so this one is up to you me personally I just don't use it uh, but yeah once again it's totally up to you uh, navigate to live tab when going live uh, let me actually show you what the live tab is so right here uh, are the different tabs that you can uh, switch between um, the mo two most uh, or mostly used tabs will be the studio tab and live tab okay Studio tab is uh, basically where all your scenes building and sources adding uh, will take place at or in. And um, the live tab is uh, the tab that you will use when your 
when you're actually streaming, when you're live. Um, this tab basically, this is like one of the most, uh, or my one of my most favorite things about uh, Streamlabs OBS is that you actually have everything in one place. You know, when someone follows or subscribes, uh, you can see his name right here. You can see the chat here. You can see your stream here. You can see your audio, your mic. Uh, you can also switch between the scenes here. And this option right here actually uh, allows you to, you know, basically it automatically navigates you to the live tab. So let's say I did something here. Now, if I press the go live button, uh, it will switch from the studio mode to the live mode. Uh, so I don't have to actually do it manually. Um, so I would say this is an option that you probably want to have. So you don't have to do it manually. It just makes the things easier for you. Uh, disable hardware acceleration. I don't think you want to do that as you probably want to take advantage uh, of your hardware, especially if you're going to, uh, you know, use it for encoding and all that good stuff. Uh, so I would leave this box unchecked. Uh, restart stream label session, run auto optimizer and import from OBS. Uh, restart stream label session. We will explain what uh, the stream labels um, are later on. Run auto optimizer. We already went through it. Uh, so we don't want to do that and import from OBS. We don't want to do that as well. Language, as you can see, you can switch uh, between different languages. We will leave it on English. Uh, output, this is where you get many different options. Let me explain the first two. So show confirmation dialog when starting streams and show confirmation dialog when stopping streams. Let me show you what this is. So let's say both of those options. Um, are on now when I press the go live button this message will pop up and it will ask me if I'm sure that I want to start streaming and same happens when let's say I stop the stream uh, it will ask me if I'm sure that I want to stop the stream uh, I would say this comes in handy uh, you know if you are doing something and you misclick uh, you know just to make sure that uh, you double check before you go live or you double check before you stop the stream. So I highly recommend leaving those options uh, on. Uh, automatically record when streaming and keep recording when stream stops. Um, this one is something that I highly recommend as well as this one. Or actually no, this one is, uh, we will leave this one unchecked and leave this one checked. Uh, this option, uh, as you probably know, you can record your uh, stream and create the footage of your stream uh, and save it on your hard drive while you stream. So basically you can later use that footage um, if you're planning to spread your content on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook or uh, wherever you want. Uh, this option will make sure that it records the whole stream to your hard drive so you can use it later on because if you don't have this uh, uh, box checked, uh, you would have to press this and then manually press this as well. Okay. But if you have this, um, have this checked, uh, you don't have to press the two. You just need to press this and it will automatically trigger, trigger, uh, the record button as well. So I highly recommend leaving this option allowed and leaving this option, uh, off. So yeah, cause if this is allowed as well, then you would have to press the stop stream button and then manually stop the recording as well. So yeah, just to make it easier for you, leave this option off, leave this option on. Uh, automatically start replay buffer when streaming, keep replay buffer active when stream stops. Uh, the replay buffer option is probably not something uh, that you will use, especially if you're someone that's just starting his streaming journey. So for now, I won't, you know, include it in this tutorial. I might do a separate video uh, later on, but uh, you don't have to worry about this. Uh, the replay buffer basically allows you to create an instant replay of whatever happened on your stream. Uh, you can basically set it to, let's say 60 seconds. And then when you press the replay buffer option, it will replay the last 60 seconds. Um, and yeah, not too many streamers use this. I'm actually thinking about somehow implementing it 
uh, into my stream, but uh, definitely not something you have to be worried about for now. Uh, source alignment snapping. Uh, if you enable this option, I will show you exactly what it does. So there are two uh, different options here, snap sources to edge of the screen and snap sources to other sources. Uh, the first option right here, snap sources to edge of the screen, I will show you right now. So let's say we have a source right here, in this case it's our webcam. If I go near the edge, you see it automatically snaps it uh, to the edge. So if you want that to happen, uh, leave this option on and let me create a another source just so we can see what the other option does this option right here snap sources to other sources is when I go near the text that I just created bam it snaps without uh, me you know doing it manually so if you want that to happen leave those two options on uh, I highly recommend leaving them on because you can control it anyway uh, let's say you don't want it to snap like this all you need to do is just to hold the control button on your keyboard and then it doesn't actually snap anywhere if you if you hold control button uh, on your keyboard that basically leaves or turns the snapping off so yeah, I would I would leave them uh, on for now and that's it from the general tab now let's go to the stream tab uh, this is where you basically connect your Streamlabs OBS to Twitch itself. So for the stream tab, we definitely want to go with streaming services. Uh, our streaming service is Twitch, but as you can see, there are other platforms as well. Uh, but yeah, as I said, our platform is Twitch uh, server. You can either just use the auto recommended option, which will basically uh, choose the closest server to wherever you live. In my case, that would be Prague, Czech Republic. Uh, so yeah, there, there's not a really a reason of doing it manually. Just go with the auto recommended, and I'm pretty sure it will really choose the closest server to you. Stream key is something that we actually gotta get uh, on our Twitch channel, and it's uh, basically a, something like a secret password that you know lets you connect your streamlabs obs um to twitch so let me actually show you where you can get your stream key if you go to your twitch channel click on your profile go to the settings uh go to channel and videos uh, right here you can see your stream key so all you need to do is to press the copy right here and go back to uh streamlabs obs and paste it right here uh, just to make sure it's really saved i will press the done button and reopen it and yeah that's it now our streamlabs obs is connected to our twitch channel uh, let's go to the output tab and this is where things get a bit complicated uh, two main factors that you want to think about when you're deciding what kind of settings uh, you will go with in this tab right here uh, are your internet speed and also the power of your CPU. Uh, you basically have to decide if you want to stream at 720p or 1080p. Uh, and I would say the you know decision is pretty simple. If your PC and internet are powerful enough, go with 1080p. Uh, if they are not, go with 720p. It's still totally watchable. Uh, I think the recommended speed for uh, 720p uh, is somewhere around or at least like 4 mbps to 8 mbps and for 1080p I would say it's somewhere higher than 8 mbps ideally more than 10 mbps uh, so yeah, those are the two main factors that you want to think about let me actually pull up uh, uh, a page uh, an official page by Twitch where they display uh, the recommended settings. So uh, here is the page that I was talking about. Uh, as you can see, the, the recommended settings are listed here. So for 720p uh, and 30 frames per second, the recommended bitrate is 3000. For 60fps at 720p, the recommended bitrate is 4500. Uh, and for 1080p at 60 frames per second, the recommended bitrate is 6000. 
uh, I will leave the link to uh, to this page in the description down below if you want to check it out for yourself um, but yeah guys this is this will differentiate for each and every one of us so yeah just play around with it see what works for you see what doesn't work for you uh, decide if you want to stream at 720p or 1080p and then just you know uh, run a couple of streams uh, see if you're dropping you know bit rates see if your internet can handle it see if your uh, pc can handle it uh, so yeah let's let's actually set up something me personally i stream at 1080p uh, so i'm using 6k uh, encoder you basically have two options here uh, either you can use the software x264 or hardware nvenc uh, the software X264 uses your CPU to encode the stream, uh, which means that, you know, naturally it's more taxing on your CPU. Uh, and the hardware NVENC uh, is the option that you get if you're using an NVIDIA graphics card. Uh, I think there's another encoder if you have uh, a graphics card by AMD. Uh, but yeah, basically the simplified difference between those two is Software X264 uses your CPU to do the encoding and Hardware NVENC uses your graphics card to do the encoding. I highly recommend to go with the graphics card option, which is the Hardware NVENC, because it basically eases out the, the, the work that your CPU has to do, you know, and with the multiple poker clients running and you know all the additional software the streaming software itself uh if your uh, cpu is not powerful enough you might run into some issues you might also you know lose fps quality and also the the stream overall might be uh laggy for your audience uh so i highly recommend to go with the hardware advanced option uh, this way your graphics card does uh, all the encoding and your CPU can uh, focus on other tasks. So yeah, that's the difference between the two. Um, I'm personally using the Advanc option, as I said. So that's uh, what I also recommend if your GPU is powerful enough, uh, of course. Um, audio bitrate, I always go with 320, um, you know, because it's the, just the best quality, the MP3. Uh, standard quality and but yeah, if you want to once again if your CPU is not powerful now you can totally go with 160 um, so yeah let's go with 320 for now uh, this is the recording tab uh, as we've already talked about you can record the footage of your stream and this is basically where you set up everything this is where you set up where would you like the uh, footage to be saved and uh, recording quality i also recommend leaving it on same as stream uh, this way you uh, you know you will basically however your stream looked like the recording will look the same if you use this option right here same as stream so yeah if you stream at 1080p 30 frames per second the recording will be 1080p 30 frames per second as well uh, so yeah, I recommend leaving it on same as stream. Recording format, I would say that MP4 is the option you wanna go with. It works the best with all the editing software. It also, you know, is basically made for 1080p uh, footage. Uh, it works the best with, uh, with it. And uh, I think the only good thing about FLV is the file is smaller. Uh, but if you have enough space, just, just go with MP4. Uh, custom user settings, not really sure what this is. Uh, replay buffer, uh, as I already talked about, we will not worry about this option for now. And yeah, that's basically it from the uh, output tab. Actually, it isn't. As you can see, we have two options, simple or advanced. Of course, for the sake of this video, we'll go with the simple option. Uh, but there's an advanced option as well. And as you, as you can see, it gets uh, kind of complicated uh, in this tab right here. I will have a separate video coming uh, on the advanced output mode where I explain uh, all the options that you have right here. Uh, this is something that you wanna do once, you know, you stream a little bit more and you actually uh, worry about this kind of stuff, especially if you wanna take um, advantage of the multi-tracking option. 
Uh, so yeah, guys, stay tuned. I will have a video coming on the advanced output mode as well. And now let's go to the audio tab. Uh, right here is where we will set up uh, all our audio devices, which is basically our speakers or our headphones and also our microphone. Uh, the sample rate, uh, we definitely want to go with 44.1. Uh, this one was added uh, not too long ago, uh, but I would say the standard size, the, the most common size, the 44.1. Kilohertz. This option was added because there were some people who used like audio interfaces and different mixers, and those mixers uh, were not supporting 44.1. Uh, but yeah, like complicated stuff. Let's just go with 44.1. Channels. You want to go with stereo. Um, that's for show. 7.1 actually. Um, okay, there might be some interesting stuff in the future. I've never seen someone. Uh, with 7.1 audio on the stream. Uh, desktop audio device, you want to use uh, or select your speakers as your main audio device. And for the mic device, you want to use your main microphone, which in our case is this one. And uh, our audio device are our speakers. And that's basically it from the audio tab. Now let's go to the video tab. Right here is where uh, you will set up uh, the resolution of your stream. Uh, as you can see, there are two different tabs here, base canvas resolution and output scale resolution. So basically what you can do with, uh, with Streamlabs OBS is, let's say uh, you want to set up your canvas resolution to something different than your actual output resolution. Okay, so this right here, what you see in OBS is called canvas. Uh, so for example, you can have your canvas at full HD, but your output uh, on 720p. If you want to, you know, basically save some CPU power, you have this option right here. But, you know, uh, I mean, you can do that if you are looking for ways to say save some of your uh, CPU usage. But yeah, if you're if you're streaming at 720p, uh, just put both of them on, on 720p, just makes things easier. If you stream at 1080p, just put both of them on 1080p. Uh, if you have both of them on 1080p or 720p, you don't have to worry about the down downscale filter, I think, because you're actually not, not downscaling since the resolutions uh, are the same for both. So just leave it on by cubic. Uh, FPS types, uh, I would say you want to go with common FPS values. Uh, I don't really know what those two other options are. Uh, that's some advanced stuff once again. So I j just go with the common FPS values uh, and just choose if you want to go with 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. Uh, what I actually found out recently is uh, I used to stream at 60 frames per second, which actually was causing my webcam to be out of sync because the maximum frames per second for my webcam are 30 frames per second. So my webcam was operating at 30 frames per second while my stream was operating on, at 60 frames per second, which was causing some problems. So I recently switched to 30 frames per second. Uh, and yeah, once again, it's totally watchable for a poker stream as there's not much animations going on. And yeah, 60 frames per second is just unnecessary in my opinion i just did it because my pc was powerful enough uh so yeah that's it from the video tab we're on 1080p 30 frames per second uh hotkeys uh, we will actually come back to this uh once we have some scenes and sources created uh advanced tab you don't really have to worry about um half of the things in this tab uh besides this one right here you want to make sure this is checked for GPU as a render device, so we can take uh, advantage of that NVENC uh, encoder. Also, we want to make sure the audio monitoring device is set to your speakers or whatever you're using, your uh, headphones or whatever. Replay buffer, we don't worry about that. Stream delay is something that is really important for us, um, poker streamers. This is where you decide how long it, the delay will be. Uh, this way you can prevent your opponents from stream sniping you, which is a term we use when someone is trying to take advantage of uh, you streaming and is trying to basically see your hand on the stream when he's in the hand with you, uh, which is something that you don't want to happen. 
Uh, me personally, I use three minutes, uh, but it's up to you. You can go all the way up to five minutes. Uh, just keep in mind that there are people watching you. So when someone asks you a question in the chat, they will have to wait five minutes before you give them an answer. Um, and it basically just ruins the, ruins the whole conversation between you and the viewer, I, say, I would say. So three minutes I found is like the, the sweet spot for me and also for a lot of other streamers. Uh, so yeah, I recommend three minutes, but once again, it's totally up to you. Uh, automatically reconnect, just leave it on um, on the default settings, sources, yes, yes, yes. So you don't have to set up anything else in this tab, I think, yep. Game overlay, we don't care about that. Scene collections, don't worry about that for now as well. Uh, notifications, uh, if you want to be notified when uh, your OBS is skipping frames or dropping frames. Uh, skipping frames and dropping frames happens when, I don't know, your you have some issues with your internet or your CPU is overloaded and it just, you know, basically when your stream doesn't run as it's supposed to run. So yeah, if you would like to be notified when you skip or drop frames, you can enable the notifications right here. And you can also select when would you like to be notified. So let's say you would like to be notified when uh, you skip or drop more than 20% of the frames, which basically means you have a problem because the stream is just lagging if this happens. Uh, you can basically select your threshold right here. Uh, I have it on 10% personally because uh, you know some skipping and some dropped frames will happen uh, all the time when you stream so you don't want to be notified all the time and have it on three percent or something so i just leave it on ten percent if it's more than ten percent i probably have some i probably have some issues and i need to fix it so yeah this is where you can enable the notifications appearance uh, you can choose between the black and the white obs uh, I usually go with the black because I like black. Uh, and those settings not really uh, something that you have to worry about as well. Face masks is a new new feature uh, in slabs and remote control. Uh, I don't think you want to use this as well. It basically allows you to uh, use Streamlabs OBS from your phone and do some changes to it. Uh, so yeah, I would say that's it from the settings and let's actually start um, creating our scenes. Uh, I remember when I was starting streaming, it took me approximately like t two months to set up my stream because there was barely any information on how to set up a poker stream and also how things work. It was it was a struggle to, to me to just find some kind of a you know, some kind of information. And it was something that I was thinking about when I was actually starting this Kalancho production project, cause it just allows me to share the experience that I have right now. I've been streaming for uh, three years. I, you know, tried multiple streaming softwares. I changed and play with the different settings. So I would say I have some, I have some experience that I can share with you guys to, to help you, um, to help you save some time and also just you know, make your make your streaming experience more efficient, and yeah. So let's get right into it, guys. Uh, the method that I use is uh, I basically create a, a base scene, and then I duplicate the scene, and I just change whatever I need to change in the scene. I know it sounds complicated right now, but trust me, it's like a one of the fastest processes. It will save you a ton of time. So just try to do your best to copy whatever I do with my mouse. I will do it slowly. Um, and then just, just try to follow me step by step. So let's actually rename our first scene. Let's call it table number one. Uh, we already have our webcam. What I'm actually gonna do is uh, I'm gonna change the resolution of my webcam. I will click on properties. Uh, then I will change the resolution uh, to 1080p. I'll put FPS. Uh, actually, no. 30 FPS. Here we go. And I will make it a bit smaller. Okay, so let's start by adding 
uh, the layout. By the way, guys, if you don't have the layout, you can visit our website kalenshow.com slash productions slash packs and download uh, this free Twitch design pack uh, that we've made. Uh, you will get a layout, double table layout, offline screen, panels and alerts for free. Uh, I will put a link in the description down below. So feel free to download this if you don't have uh, any graphics yet. And then if you would like to invest in the future and buy some of our packs, we would really much appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, for now, we will use the free pack. Uh, so you want to press this plus button, which will add a new source to, uh, to the scene. We will name it layout. Not layout, layout, add source. And now we will choose the layout image itself and as you can see my camera disappeared it's because the sources right here they work as layers so whatever is on top will show up first so as you can see my webcam is below the layout and if I pull it up on top uh, it will be where it was before uh, so yeah, what we want to do now is to fit our webcam into this little webcam window that we've uh, created on the layout design itself. Uh, you want to do that by holding the control key and um, you know making it smaller, bigger, however you want. Uh, but just make sure you're holding the control uh, key on your keyboard and just do your best to fit it in as perfectly as possible. Let's see, let's move it a bit here. Yeah, actually, a little bit to the top. I'm very precise when it comes to this. And a bit up, maybe. Yeah, whatever. Guys, you really need to, um, you know, do your best to have the details figured out. No, that, that looks good. Uh, so, now we have our layout, we have our webcam. So, what we actually want to do now is um to display the tables themselves uh you have to think about how many tables you would like to display uh, streaming comes with many advantages but with many disadvantages as well because when you stream and play poker your ev just goes down okay first of all you can't mass multi-table and stream at the same time of course you can technically but you're just not gonna play the same way okay so i would say the the sweet spot for streaming is six tables. Uh, if you need to play more than six tables, uh, just play them on the side, but don't display them on the stream, which is not ideal once again. Uh, so yeah, if you're just someone that's starting streaming, I would highly recommend to not go with more than four tables. Uh, and once you're advanced, try to keep it at six, maybe eight tables if you are like really advanced. Uh, Keep it, keep it at um, that number. Uh, so yeah, let me actually open up some tables so we can uh, display them uh, on OBS. So yeah, guys, I opened up some tables. Uh, this is where you will understand why two monitors are very important. So right now I can actually show you if possible. You see on one side, I have the streaming software. On the other monitor, I have the tables themselves. Okay, um, I think it just makes sense to, um, you know, have the monitors and have all the poker stuff on one monitor and then have all the streamer stuff on the other monitor. It just makes the workflow easier. It also lets you set up uh, your OBS in just a more efficient way. So let me show you the trick. Okay, add a new source. You go with the display capture right here and you name it table. Once you add a source, you can choose what monitor would you like to display. As you can see on one monitor, I have the OBS and whatever I'm recording right now. On the other monitor, I have the tables themselves. Make sure you have this option, uh, capture cursor. Um, this way you can you know, see the mouse and then just press done now what you want to do is you want to crop out the first table right here 
you can do that by holding the alt key on your keyboard okay so hold the alt key take your mouse right click on the square right here and drag it down below now do the same from the right side holding the alt key do the same from the bottom you don't need to be precise right now we will do the de detailing a little bit later and there you go you have the first table now release the alt key and just move the table around uh, and now without holding the alt key now hold the control key on your keyboard right click on the square right here and make the table bigger so here we go i would say that's perfect and now you can just see if the crop uh, is accurate once again holding the alt key to see if the detailing is all right and yeah i would say this is um this is pretty good so we were able to crop out our first table we will crop out the rest of the tables a little bit later okay as i said we need to create one base scene and then it will speed up the process of you know doing the same for the other uh five tables that we have uh so yeah for now let's just leave it on this table right here uh the next thing we want to do is probably add in a chat box right you can do that by going to the widgets chat box right here click add source uh, you can name it chat box or chat or whatever would you like uh and yeah uh, once again those settings are too uh complicated and too you know basically there's too much to just cover in this video right here so we will go with the classic clean theme i will do a separate video where i will talk about the the chat box itself uh so yeah, just press the done button if you want to test if your chat box is working you can do it right here i will actually post as many messages as possible then what you want to do is you just want to move it around fit it uh in the box right here by the way guys the trick i don't know if i uh if i already told you but if you don't want it to snap to the edge remember uh, just use the control key so you can move it precisely wherever you want it uh so yeah right now we have we have the chat ready as well uh what's next latest follower uh this is the stream labels uh option that i was talking about there's a difference between stream labs and stream labels i know that it can sound confusing from time to time but a stream label um basically allows you to display whatever you want the newest follower the new subscriber top donator you know basically everything that uh happens on your stream in our case it's gonna be uh, the latest follower so we will create that and we will search for most recent follower is uh, what i think we're looking for total f no here right here most recent follower we will press ok we will change the font to something a little bit more heavy also make it a bit bigger and as you can see the uh, the label showed up right here and then what we need to do once again if you don't want the snapping to happen uh, press the control on your keyboard and just place it wherever you want it uh, to be in our case that's here uh what's next yeah the snas let me open up uh the snas software this is uh, what will allow us to display the time uh, and also if you would like to have a countdown before the stream or count up to whatever you can do it with uh, snaz right here you go to the chronos tab and yeah if you would like to display for how long you've been live uh, you do that by uh, using this option right here chrono up uh, you just basically press the start button and as you can see it will start the count up uh, so yeah, let me actually show you how to 
uh, import this into Streamlabs OBS. Uh, you press the text, add source, you name it, timer, add source, and this is very important. You have to check this box, read from file. Then you go to SNES and you copy the file right here. Basically what SNES does, it generates a file, txt file, um, on your PC and once you copy the path to that file and put it uh, to Streamlabs OBS, it will be able to read it and it will display it accordingly uh, on the stream. So as you can see right here, we have our timer as well. Let me resume the timer and as you can see it will go up and it will uh, show your audience for how long have you been streaming okay so let's add the smg so we'll do the same as we did for uh, the snaz we'll name it music uh, let me open up uh, the smg software so uh, as i already told you it's not for free it was free back in the day uh, but it's 9.99 right now so if you would like to have this option you have to uh, invest some money. I think the SDIP software that I've talked about is for free, um, but it doesn't support as many music players as SMG does. Uh, so yeah, but if you go for the, the free option, SNIP, uh, the process of putting it in OBS will be basically the same as it is in SMG. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, put our SMG uh, into, the, into the OBS. So let's play something on YouTube. Oh, I'm actually playing something on YouTube. Already, let's press start. Uh, the next thing we want to do is to copy this pad right here. Go to the properties. Once again, check this box right here. Read from file. Put the pad right there and go to browse and select this file right here that says current song. So once you press it, uh, I will just change the font, make it a bit bigger and just put it where it needs uh, to be. Um, let me actually show you how to make the, the text, how to make it move. Uh, you do that by going to filters, uh, adding a filter right here, uh, choosing scroll, done and now you can choose whether you would like the text to move to the left move it to the right you can also change the speed you can also make it move uh, like this if you're crazy <laughs> uh, but yeah let's say you want it to move to uh, the left with this speed right here. you can also limit the the width which basically uh, yeah prevents you from the text cutting um, so you can play around with the, with the settings here if you want let me actually make it a bit slower right here so yeah, we have our uh, SMG we have our SNES we have our uh, stream uh, label we also have our table our webcam our chat uh, I think the only thing left is the alert box once again this is something that deserves a separate uh, video but yeah this is basically where you know if someone follows or someone subscribes to you this is where you can set up um, how would you like the alerts to look like uh, once again you can customize this um, customize this to the to the fullest so this deserves a, a separate video I'm actually gonna make a separate video about this very soon so stay tuned for that uh, for now we just leave it at whatever it is as a default one put it uh, right here for example uh, so yeah we have our alerts as well and I would say uh, we have uh, a complete scene already let me actually check if I'm forgetting something browser source not really we got this credit stream label we have that the jar we don't want to use that for now uh, so yeah, I think we're good to go. Now guys, this is where the things get uh, very simple for you and also for me. So as I talked about, uh, 
the, the method that I use is I create a base scene which we've just created and then I just duplicate the scene uh, as many times as I want. In my case that's six tables because we want to display six tables. So we will uh, duplicate the scene six times. Okay, let me show you what I mean by that. So let's duplicate this. Let's change it to table number two. So right now we have two same scenes, right? But we don't want it to be the same. What do we want to change in the scene number two? We want to change the table that's displayed, right? So we will do that by uh, selecting the table and the C number two, go to the table. And right now we will hold the Alt key and we will crop the table that's right next uh, to the table number one. Make sure uh, it's as detailed as possible. And here we go. Now when I switch, there's the table number one, there's the table number two. Uh, I'm actually not gonna play with the details that much, uh, but yeah, guys, uh, take some time and make sure the position is the same. So right here, you can see it's 631 right here, 75 right here, 70 right here. So if you select this right here, make sure the position of the table is same so it doesn't jump like this. Uh, I won't do it right now because it will take us a lot of time. I will just do a simplified version of it. Uh, and yeah, we do the same process for the third table. Uh, let me actually drink some water real quick, guys. Okay, so third table, once again, we select uh, the table in the scene. And using the Alt key, we just crop out uh, the third table, position it somewhere. And yeah, right now, as you can see, table number one, table number two, table number three. And we will do the same process six times. For the sake of this tutorial, I will go through it with you. Uh, now it's actually where it gets a bit complicated because you actually need to go, you know, one uh, one line down because you have three tables at the top and three tables at the bottom. So we want to crop down right now. Actually, one of my tables closed, so I need to reopen it very soon. So yeah, right now you need to crop it down to the fourth table, which is right below the first table, right? So this is table uh, number four. As I said, guys, I'm not gonna pay too much attention uh, to the details. Duplicate. Table number five, once again, Alt, and you move it to the right this time. Here we go, this is table number five, duplicate it. Table number six, and let me actually open, let me actually open uh, some table. go so once again you highlight it alt alt right here as well bam and there we go we have our six tables now when I switch table number one table number two table number three table number four table number five table number six super easy right everything stays the same uh, the only thing that changes is the table which is the effect that uh, you want to have what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna add a, a scene transition as you can see when I switch now it just basically switches it without any kind of animation uh, and one of my favorite animations is the fade animation uh, 300 milliseconds duration yep We'll press done, done, and now when we switch, you see how it kind of 
you know fades in the into the table once again guys the the tables are all over the place um, but as i said you can you know make sure the uh, basically it's uh, positioned the same uh, everywhere uh, and yeah right now when we have our scenes created let's actually take advantage of the hotkeys this is something that will make your stream flow much 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 easier so let me actually show you the difference so right now let's say i'm uh, six table in and i want to switch to the table number five uh, i have to move my mouse to the scenes right here press the you know table number five and then do whatever i'm doing right here uh, and there is a more efficient way of doing it which is using the hotkeys to switch between the scenes uh, what i use personally are the f keys on my keyboard but you can customize it to whatever you want uh, but yeah the most ideal option would be if you use the uh, if you use the f keys on your keyboard so you want to find the the scene so table number five will mean that the switch to scene option will be f5 right table number two go all the way to the bottom switch to scene will be f2 for table number two table six once again all the way down switch to scene will be f6 table number three all the way down switch to scene f3 table four and the same uh, process and table number one switch to scene uh, number one and i think that's it right so we have table number one table number four table number three six where is table number two uh, table number two and table table number five so we have all of our tables and now watch okay let's say um uh, doing something on table number one right I'm grinding and then I want to switch to table number five okay I don't have to you know do it manually anymore what I can do is without using my mouse I can switch between the tables using the hotkeys right f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 f f6 you can do the you can do the same for all the other additional scenes let's say you want to uh add in a add in a scene for i don't know a full webcam for example where you would like to tell something to your audience uh, you do the video capture um, device press add source you already have the webcam and you also want to set a hotkey for this uh, you go to the hotkeys tab once again uh, you find the scene you're looking for which is full webcam and switch to scene can be for example f7 so right now when you're on the table number one and you want to switch to the full webcam you just press f7 and it switches to the to the full webcam view so yeah hotkeys very very useful so yeah guys this is this is pretty much it from the streaming software setup i would say uh let me actually explain how this mixer right here works so this is where all your you know audio devices are shown so uh this is if you're playing some music this is where you can see how loud the music is uh this is where uh you know the, your microphone is displayed uh ideally you would like the the bar to be somewhere you know between the green mark and the yellow mark once it's in the red mark your mic is too loud or you're screaming uh when it goes to the to the red bar so ideally for the most um, pleasant viewer experience you want the bar to reach the yellow uh, green uh, line when you're speaking normally uh, and for the music you want the the music to be somewhere in the middle or maybe somewhere around here uh, uh, when the music is playing so basically your voice needs to be louder than the music of course uh, I often see streamers just you know blasting the music not caring about the you know that people can barely hear them and they have to scream and stuff it's just not a, a pleasant a pleasant experience for the for your followers so make sure the music is somewhere around here and your mic when you talk is somewhere around here uh, if you would like to make your 
microphone louder you can do so by uh, pressing this wheel right here I think go into filters pressing this and you can uh, uh, use uh, this gain option right here so you choose gain you do done and right here is where you can make your microphone louder or lower depends on uh, depends on you or you can if you want to make it lower you can just lower it by doing this but if you'd like to gain some dbs this is how you do it with filters uh what else can i show you yeah actually let me let me show you how playing the music works so let's say you're playing some music uh, on youtube right you don't want it to be all the way up right because right now people can hear you and when you talk so just leave the leave the volume at maximum in obs uh, but lower it in the music player itself you know and then look at your obs and if it's somewhere around here it's uh, more than fine people can hear the music but they can hear you when you talk as well so i would say those are the most ideal settings when it comes to the audio uh what you also want to disable are the windows notifications and windows sounds on your pc i think you do that by uh going to ay 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 uh system i think sound maybe no 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 notifications and make sure this is off you know from time to time there might be some 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 messages popping out and you know if your obs is you know all the way up in here the the, the sound of the not notification might blow uh, the ears out uh, or might blow your audience's ears out and you don't want that to happen. So make sure the sound notifications are off. And what else? Am I forgetting something? The name of the stream. Let me actually show you where to change the name of the stream itself. So basically before uh, you start the stream every day, uh, you want to go to the dashboard right here and you want to change the name of the stream to whatever that stream will be that day so let's say it's sunday playing everything for example playing everything on sunday of course playing everything you can customize the notification uh, so let's say someone has notifications turned on when you go uh, or when you go live uh, you can put a custom message here you can leave it on whatever your name is when live or you can add some custom messages in there uh, category will be poker for us and tags is basically uh, something that will let uh, you know a new audience discover you when they uh, search for those tags your channel will pop up uh, stream language this is where you choose whatever your whatever your language uh, is when you stream so let's say you're you know from russia for example you can change to the russian language right here and you will be shown in the russian category uh, on twitch and yeah that's basically it guys you want this uh, tab opened when you stream so you can you know see if you're actually going live you can also see who's hosting you you can see if the stream is up and everything uh so yeah when you stream have this have this opened and also make sure you switch uh to this but because we did that in the settings it will switch automatically uh what else am i missing am i missing something comments guys uh when it comes to the comments uh if you've uh, ever seen uh any of the uh twitch streams there is an option to put different commands in the chat i don't have any uh, right now uh, but let me show you how to set them up basically you have two options you can either use the chat bot that's integrated in the streamlabs obs or you can use the night bot uh, if you want to use the night bot uh, you need to go to night bot nightbot.com actually okay nope <laughs> nightbot oh nightbot.tv i'm sorry uh you need to log in you don't need to create a new account you will just log in with uh, your twitch account you will authorize it 
and this is where you can you know create different commands let me just show you one command just for example add command let's call it uh hold on let me actually switch my keyboard from english to check uh let's call it facebook for example uh like my facebook page facebook.com slash calancho productions like my facebook page facebook.com slash calancho productions submit and you have your command created and you also need to actually do still need to mod it mod nightbot yeah so before you start using nightbot you need to give it mod aka moderator rights in uh, on your channel you do that by using the command uh, slash mod nightbot in the chat press enter and then you can you know create and use commands so right now we created the facebook command so if i type in exclamation point facebook uh, yeah nightbot where are you my friend <laughs> where is nightbot when i need it uh okay i so i figured out the problem uh i had to stop the video uh yeah don't forget to press this button right here that says join channel join channel we already modded it you can see it actually tells you to mod it nightbot is now joining your channel and that's it so right now it should work exclamation point facebook yep if you don't want to use nightbot you can also use uh the cloud bot by streamlabs obs uh, it's basically the same you know cloudbot once again is just something that's in integrated uh in um, the streamlabs obs itself uh so if you don't want to you know log in every time and have your browser open with nightbot uh just go with uh, with the cloudbot uh, i'm actually still using the nightbot uh, nightbot for commands uh, but i'm probably gonna switch to the cloudbot there were some issues with cloudbot back in the day but i think they fixed it with the new update so i'm gonna make a switch to the cloudbot as well and the process is uh, the same you need to give uh, you know moderator rights to streamlabs in your chat and then you can just you know create um, different comments once again same process exclamation point whatever put the uh, text and the link right here you press confirm and then you can take advantage of the comments so yeah i think this is it uh, let me actually think if i'm if I, did i forget something i don't think so i think we covered uh, everything and yeah guys that's basically it for this video uh, i think we covered everything you need to know so now the only thing that's left is for you to press this button right here and actually start streaming guys um just some uh, general advice okay don't just stream on twitch okay i know that this was a how to stream poker on twitch tutorial but just streaming on twitch is not enough okay if you think that you will just sit in front of the camera play some poker and the audience will come to you you are terribly terribly wrong okay make sure you promote yourself everywhere you know every content that you can put out on other platforms as well gives you a chance to get discovered by you know someone new and just expands your your audience so promote yourself stay as con stay as uh, consistent as possible you know just enjoy it make sure you don't do this for money that's a common mistake as well like if you're starting streaming and if you watch this tutorial just so you can make money on twitch you're not gonna make any money on twitch okay make sure you're doing it because you just you know love building communities you love playing poker you love creating content and the money will just 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 be secondary you know and if you're good it will come so yeah that's the that's the last piece of advice that i would like to leave you guys with and uh, as I said, if you have some questions, put them in the comments down below or uh, send us a message on StreamHelp. 
And yeah, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. As I said, there's gonna be many other tutorials coming where we will actually talk about everything that's in here in more detailed way and more detailed manner. So yeah, this was a one big tutorial and we're gonna have, you know, many, many, many different smaller tutorials coming. So guys, once again, thank you so much and I will see you next time.